We are starting the show with a bang today. It is our pleasure to welcome in our good friend from Fox Sports, Mark Schlereth, who's on the call this weekend with Chris Myers and company. Stink, how's it going, man? Happy Friday. Yeah, happy Friday to you. It's going great, man. Had great meetings up at uh, Commander Central, and uh, I was it was great. It was great to watch practice, great to uh, meet with Ron and Eric Bieniemy and uh, Sam Howell and got to meet with Jamin Davis. So uh, I had a great afternoon really uh, hashing it out with those guys. So when you uh, earlier in the week you were on some other shows and you talked about the offensive line performance from Sunday uh, against the Giants bluntly, which is to say it wasn't very good. And you, people that listen to you know, like you say, you call it like it is. After you make comments that strong and they get the kind of attention they did, is it? I don't say awkward to walk in, but like, do, does it come up in the meetings? <laughs> no, I don't care. I know like, you don't care. I'm don't just curious it. if it comes up. Right? Yeah. No. Listen, it comes up in that you know. Uh, like uh, Martin Mayhew pulled me aside. He was my former teammate, and you know, and um, ultimately, you know, asked me like, "Hey, did you get any side eyes from there?" And I don't care. Like, side eye me all you want. <laughs> I know what I'm. I know what I'm studying. I know what I'm looking at. And here's the here's the the point. If you're a guy that does what I do, and you just watch TV copy, and you say things that are blatantly untrue, or you don't have full context, then you're not respected. But Ron and, and the rest of the people over there, Biennemi and Sam and all the people over there know that I come from a place of expertise, and I didn't watch just the television copy. I dug into the coach's film, and I can tell you every negative play they had the last four weeks. I've looked at every sack, and there are a lot of dirty fingerprints on it all. But the bottom line is their offensive line against New York, against the Buffalo Bills, they did not play well. But there's plenty. I mean, you can look at you can look at every single sack like I did, um, and you know those comments were on uh, on my my podcast, the Odyssey podcast, the Stinking Truth. So mm-hmm. check that out. But I've got all kinds of information there, and I will do a wrap up show next week on the Stinking Truth podcast um, that will basically take all the notes that I had from these meetings that I just had, and uh, and I'll discuss the game between Philly and and Washington. But the bottom line is this. I can look at every sack, and I can look at receivers who don't beat one-on-one coverage. I can look at receivers that don't get their head around, they snap their head around, like a lack of football understanding. So you get a blitzer from your side, and you're running a shallow cross, and you're waiting to hit the mesh point with the other receiver running a little bit, you know, a little bit deeper shallow cross. You're running some type of pick concept, and you don't snap your head around. So the quarterback's ready to throw it, and you're not looking. So... I can look at that. I can look at Sam Howell holding on to the ball or not changing and redirecting a protection. Like I can, see, you can see it all when you're looking at all, you know, the all 22 and I've got the end zone from both sides. I mean, I have, I consult for several teams. So I have all the coaches tape on everything. And that's what I, that's what I do all week. I just look at tape. And so there are plenty of dirty fingerprints, but um, the lack of just the lack of execution up front. Um, the lack of blocking guys one-on-one on their offensive line, um, and, and the lack of kind of quote-unquote understanding of how to pick up games. Um, I mean, even if you're filling, you decide not to blitz, you're going to run a bunch of games because they have yet to pick one up. And so, you know, and I'm exaggerating that to a degree, but they were so bad that you're going to get a ton of tackle-tackle land or tackle-tackle games or, you know, uh, tackle, you know, tackle, tackle, backer, uh, Phil. So you're going to get a ton of that stuff because you can't pick it up or you haven't picked it up. So we're about to find out, but um, it's it's been pretty ugly. Uh, yeah, to say the least. Uh, Mark Schlereth is with us, and he's talking about uh, tackle, tackle, and stunts and games and stuff. And we're six minutes into the show, and Mark, I'm just so happy. This is this is this is how I wanted to start my Friday is is getting deep into the X's and O's with you because. I think you put it so well when you say there are fingerprints all over it because everyone wants to put all of the blame on one place. It's all Sam's fault. It's all the enemy's fault. It's all the O-line's fault. And when you give up 40 sacks, I think is the number, through seven games, uh, there there is blame all around. Are there any threads, though, that tie everything together where you say, like, this is the biggest thing. If they fix this thing or they can get better at this thing, and it sounds like maybe the the kind of global understanding of it all, then right. they can they can bring that number down dramatically. Yeah, well, I think 
I think then I, I look at the enemy and, you know, a very pointed question. What do you have to do? To, what, what do you have to do from a play caller standpoint to be better? Because I'll tell you from my perspective, you give up seven sacks a game. It's not just your offensive line that, that is struggling or that stinks. It's your play caller. And so, you know, you get into a situation where you're in a bunch of condensed formations. You know, you're a three by one, but you've got a tight split on the backside and, and your tight end is just barely open off the ball a couple of yards. You bring in a lot of players that are blitzers in that situation. And now your quarterback has to guess right. Your offensive line has to slide right. You have to decide if you're going to bypass the linebacker, get to the edge. Like you've got to make all these decisions on the fly. And obviously that's harder to do when you're up in New York on the road. The other part of that is, like, for me, if we're struggling in pass protection. Let's get out of three wides. Let's get out of nickel personnel so they have, you know, athletic blitzers and corners and safeties that can blitz and linebackers that can blitz. And let's muck this thing up. Let's get into heavy personnel. Let's get into two tights. Let's get a fullback in there. Um, you know what, let's, let's do that and let's get their fat personnel on the field. Like let's get all linebackers on the field, all their big defensive linemen who don't have the athleticism and aren't going to be as good a blitzers. So like from a play calling standpoint, you've got to be better with how you run the football, the quick game, the quick screen game, all those kind of things. You have to eliminate uh, opportunities for the team to rush you. So I'll give you a, for instance, if you're going to drop back, on an average game, 35 times. you got to figure out a way to get that down to about 12 times where the offensive line is left hanging out to dry to, to pass pro. So how do you do that? Well, you get five three-step drops, right? You get five screens, you know, a couple bubble screens, a couple regular screens. Now we're down from 35 to 25, all right? Now we get, now we get a couple of run action, play action. I'd like to see them get under center more. Right, run action, you flag the ball out there, you boot keep, you move the pocket, you get a couple of sprints, you do that. Now we're down to, you know, now we're down to 20. Now you, you, you have a couple of five step drops that have zero hitches in it. So it's a five step all go and we're going to throw the ball. It's going to come out on time. So now all of a sudden we get five of those. Now I'm down to 15 plays, 15 plays that we have to hold up as an offensive line. If you can't hold up in those 15 plays when you've had all that other stuff, those are all tools, right, in your tool belt. Right. So you're not being asked to say, hey, man, I want you to build this deck, and uh, I want you to make this beautiful deck on the back of my house, um, but I'm not going to give you a level. I'm not going to give you a saw. I'm not going to give you a screw. I'm not going to give you screw guns. I'm just going to give you a hammer. I, I can build you a deck, but the deck's going to suck, and I would suggest you don't step on it. <laughs> so, right, if you can't, if you can get it down to 15 and I still can't hold up, then I suck as an offensive lineman. You need to get new offensive line. But as a play caller, you keep putting guys in positions to fail. Don't be surprised when they fail. That's all. And it, it's a very honest conversation. And, you know, and, and what are you going to do differently to help your group out? You know, and those are, those are, they're, it's not vitriolic or anything. It's just real. It's like, let's have some real conversations of what's going on here. Totally. And the thing is, Mark, like, we, this is, that's kind of the offense we thought we were going to get when EB got here. And, and Logan Paulson and I talked about this on our podcast all summer. And we've been talking about it all year. We've talked about it on the show. And we've said many of the same things. And obviously, they, uh, they have a little bit more credence coming from Logan, a decade in the league, coming from you, three Super Bowl rings, than they do coming from me, who's covered the league as a reporter and, and knows more than the average person, but is still a, a media person who didn't play in the NFL. But if we can all come up with the same solutions, as you have that conversation with Eric, why hasn't he implemented them? Because they seem so painfully obvious. At least some of them do. Well, yeah, some of them do. But then you look at you know you look at the way you're built, and that and the way you're built is not Eric's fault. Like he like that's not his fault. That all your tight ends are six foot five and you know and high cut athletes, and they don't ne necessarily sink their hips very well and block people. And you don't have anybody. You know you have. Alex Arm on the practice squad, but you don't have anybody that can actually line up in the backfield as a fullback and really, you know, really create movement on a, you know, on a ISO play or a bob backer on, you know, a back on backer type of, of run, right? So you don't have, like, from a personnel standpoint, uh, I would I would say that your team has been built from the outside in. 
So you got great receivers. That's awesome to have great receivers. But I know one thing about this league, and this will always be true. This will never go in and out of fashion. Um, if you can't block people and you can't control the line of scrimmage, I don't care how dynamic your receivers are, you're going to lose. And that is 100% true. It will never change. And, you know, you look at the way these two teams have been built, like these two teams that are facing off right now, you, you make a, if you, if you really broke down the two teams, the rosters, the Philadelphia Eagles are built from the inside out. I mean, what, what's the strongest parts of their football team? Their offensive line, their defensive line. Without question, there's nobody that could argue that. And even when they are dominant up front, they still go out and get Jalen Carter. They still go out and, and draft Cam Jurgens in the second round. They still go out and address that position. So they never let that become a position of weakness. And then when they have a, a miss at the receiver position in Jalen Rager, they dump him and they go out and trade for A.J. Brown. I say, well, let's get a proven veteran here. But the bottom line is they can dominate you at the line of scrimmage at all times, and therefore they're always going to have a they're always going to be in a position of strength to win football games. Mark Slayer, NFL on Fox, is on the call this weekend with us here on the Hoffman Show, and that makes total sense. And it's been a, a huge, I think, complaint uh, from the fan base and, and from everybody watching this team that wants to see him succeed as they've watched the. O line deteriorate over the last four years, but of course there is just the simple like, okay, well then, what about this weekend? Because you can't get a whole new offensive line this weekend, and sure. you also have a quarterback who had a sack problem in college. He holds the ball for a long time. You mentioned some of the things with Sam in terms of identifying protections. Like, how do you, how do you try to manage that this weekend? And by the way, what did they do against the Eagles the first time? Because that was probably their best out offensive performance of the season, even though it came in a loss. Yeah, yeah, no question about it. They got the ball out quicker. Um, so you design things to get the ball out quick. You get your quick game going. You get all that stuff. You get all that stuff rolling. They got to run the ball better. I mean, they've got to be more. Uh, they they have to run the ball better, and they have to. Like, here's the thing about running the football, and this is one another reason I'd like to see them under center a little bit more. Um, opens up the real play action stuff, the hard play action. Um, it also opens up your run game. Out of out of shotgun, it limits. You know, it limits probably 40% of what you can run as an offense. Um, you know, you're running out of gun, you're running mid zone, running, you know, you're running power, power and counter essentially. And there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of front side plays when you're sitting side saddle with a running back. So it eliminates a bunch of stuff you can run. The other thing it does and what people don't really understand and Philly, don't get me wrong. Philly runs pretty much primarily all shotgun as well. But they have a bunch of full grown ass men on their line of scrimmage that will thunder punch you, you know, the clown hammer your ass. <laughs> so it's, it's different, right? Yeah. But one of the things that happens to you when you run out of shotgun, and I put, I always do this when I'm watching film, I time clock things. So I'll put a stopwatch on it. And on average, um, from snap to handoff to the line of scrimmage, it takes a running back about four tenths of a second longer out of shotgun run than it does out of under center run because the quarterback gets the ball and he's going to the running back as he's moving forward. He's not waiting for the running back and then holding it in his belly as he travels to the line of scrimmage. So about four tenths of a second longer that you have to hold a block. And when you're already struggling as an offensive line and now I have to hold my on my block for a half a second longer. That's the difference between a no yard gain, you know, where a guy is squaring you up in the, in the hole and arm tackles where you fall forward for four and a half yards and you stay on schedule. And so there's, there's some, there's some stuff that I would just look at. And I, and, and this is just me personally, um, you know, in my six years in Washington, we never ran a shotgun play <laughs> Our four right. years under Joe Gibbs. We never ran a shotgun play. Right. I did in Denver, but uh, but most of it was only third down, you know, shotgun stuff. It wasn't a lot of it wasn't a lot of gun in the league at that point. But you know that again, I think there's I think there's a place for a lot of shotgun stuff, but I think that you have to be more balanced than that. And as far as Sam Howell is concerned, I think one of the things you have to understand is that when you grow up in this league and all you are is in shotgun, um, 
not even grow up in this league, but you go through college and all you do is run shotgun stuff, your footwork is lazy mechanically and it doesn't time up to the routes. And it doesn't really need to in college because you're not facing multiple cover coverages and you've got a wide side of the field and there's different spacing in the college game. Your feet for a quarterback, your feet dictate the rhythm of the offense. And your feet are the timing mechanism of the passing game. And if your feet are not totally in sync with the route and route combinations, you will never be on time with the football. And so this is a big part of the learning curve for a lot of these quarterbacks coming out of college. I'll give you, for instance, real quick. Why is CJ, why is uh, CJ Stroud having unbelievable success where young and, you know, Richardson obviously got hurt, but where those guys aren't? Well, CJ Stroud has been under center since Pop Warner. He was under center a bunch at Ohio State. From a footwork standpoint, talking to their coaches that coached in San Francisco, he had better under center mechanics and footwork in his drops than Brock Purdy did, who played four years at Iowa State as an under center quarterback. It matters. It's not the best, it's not the best college quarterback that you're going after. It's the best quarterback who transitions and skill set transitions the best in the, to the NFL's game, which is completely different from the college game. Yeah, no, that's really well put. And, you know, Sam's struggles from under center are, uh, are definitely present when you watch the film. Um, you can see that, the, the the struggle with the footwork, the timing. I mean, I think some of the height stuff comes in. Uh, if these guards aren't going to be like elite guards in front of him, how much space does he have? Can he actually see the route? So there's a lot of that. Uh, real quick before we let you get out of here, Mark. Uh, defensively, the commanders have been tremendously consistent over the four years of Jack Del Rio. They have been terrible the first five games and then they've gotten pretty good over the remainder of the season with that uh this year they're on schedule they've been much better the last two weeks last week probably their best defensive performance of the season do you think that they figured some things out or has it just been a case of facing desmond ritter and whatever's left of the giants offense last week yeah no i think i think they've probably figured some things out there's obviously you know been some growing pains from uh, forbes um, they've, they've mixed around the, you know, the defensive backfield with St. Juice going over there and starting a corner and, you know, and, and flip flopping some guys and that and a couple of guys, uh, Derek Forrest being hurt. Uh, you know, he's a really good football player. So there's been some, there's been some of those issues. Cody Barton getting hurt last week at the linebacker spot. So there, there have been some of those issues. They've got a great front, you know, they've got a, just a great front eight rotation for crying out loud. So they are, you know, they're outstanding that way. The other thing to me is, you know, is the complementary nature of football. When you when you're going three and out on a, a majority of plays, and you're not converting third downs because you're not having success on first down, and it's it's really hard on a defense because um, defense is you know it's it's just much more reactionary than the offensive side of the football. And there's part of me that just felt like, and has felt like, this defensive philosophy doesn't really complement their offensive philosophy or vice versa. And so I think there needs to be a little bit more of a melding of, of these two kind of concepts where, Hey, listen, here's what we're going to do. You know, we're going to, we're going to kind of, we're going to kind of big up, if you will, heavy up in being a little bit more 21 personnel or, or 12 personnel or 22 personnel type of stuff. And we're going to slow the pace down a little bit. We're going to be a little bit more physical in the run game. And we're going to take some pressure off of us to make sure we're in third down and manageable situations um, so that we can churn some first downs so that we're not always behind the chains and so that we complement our defense a little bit better. Because what ends up happening is, and, and you know this, you, you get into a situation where, hey, if, if you start all of a sudden counting possessions, and say my 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 offensive football team is possessing the ball, and they're driving. You know they're putting seven, eight, nine minute drives together, and they're scoring field goals and stuff. Eventually, you'll start to you'll start to count your defense or your offensive possessions on the other side. Going, shoot, we only have like normally we have twelve in a game. Right now we're counting, and we may get seven. 
So what do you do? Well, you start conscious, you, you know, consciously you start going, well, we got to throw the ball because every, every position we got to score and because we're running out of possessions. And now you give that defense an absolute opportunity to go hunt with guys like Deron Payne and Montez Sweat and Chase Young and, and, you know, Jonathan Allen. So like, I just don't think they've matched up complimentary wise as an offense and a defense. No, definitely not. Uh, at the Atlanta game where they had a good offensive first half, I think is probably the best example of that this year. Um, ironically, the other one's probably Philly. So we'll see if they can repeat it again on Sunday. Uh, Mark, great stuff as always. Hopefully I'll see you Sunday at FedEx uh, after I get there. And if not, have a great call either way. And uh, we always appreciate your time here on the show. Appreciate it. Hey, make sure you check out the uh, Stinking Truth podcast too on Odyssey. So yes, make sure absolutely. you guys check that out because it's going to be uh, like I said, I'll have that leftover show after this game that I'll probably uh, record on Monday. So uh, you'll get to all the inside stuff. Love it. Love it. Uh, check that out. The Stinking Truth on the free Odyssey app, wherever you get your podcast. Mark, appreciate it, man. Thank you. You got it. Take care. All right. That's Mark Schlereth, everybody, with us here on The Hoffman Show. What a start to the show today. Tremendous stuff from Stink. And it actually rolls really nicely into what we talked about to open the show on Take Command. If you haven't listened to the podcast yet, you you just keep listening right now because if you want to hear more about how the commanders can detail up their running game and if they need to, I mean, let, let's just be honest, they need to run the football more, but more importantly, they need to be more efficient running the football. The distinction on that and how they can actually accomplish it from the brain of Logan Paulson. That is next on the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and always live on the free Odyssey app. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.